beginning of time. With no point of reference, spoke to the God who fleshed out the wonders of life. And as you sleep, a hundred million galaxies are born in the labor of your breath. The planet's born. If the stars were made to worship, so would I as I can see your heart in everything you say. Every bird and star signifies a word of praise. The creation sings your praises so loud. You're a God of your promise, God of your promise. Don't speak in vain, no syllable empty your voice. Oh, once you have spoken, nature and sight follow the sound of your voice. As you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath. You live on evolving into the world you see. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. Oh Lord, I can see your heart in everything you say. Every page of sky and canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. Still obeys you, so will I. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Our God is mighty. Our God is powerful. Our God is excellent. Our God is so unique. And that's why this morning we have to give him praise. We have to give him honor. We have to give him glory. Hallelujah. It's good to have you again online this morning. God richly bless you. How was your night? I believe you had a great night. God bless you. Before we go ahead this morning, quickly, I want you to invite your friends. I want you to invite your family. I want you to tell them to join us again on this platform this morning in order to receive blessings from the most high God. Praise the Lord, somebody. I also want to say thank you to every man, to every woman that is sharing this program. This morning, I want you to share this program. I want you to go ahead this morning. As you are hearing the sound of my voice, 
I want you to share. I want you to share. I want you to share. I want you to share this program. Let's give it two minutes so that you can join me in sharing and spreading this news to somebody. There's somebody in your family. There's somebody in your contact. There's somebody that you know very well that has to be part of this broadcast this morning. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let's share this morning. Just go ahead. Let's share this morning. Go ahead, go ahead. Don't hold it to yourself. 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 Let's go ahead again this morning. Let's share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Let's share it. Keep sharing, keep sharing. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing this morning. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. We have one more minute. 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 Just go ahead, go ahead and share with somebody this morning. Somebody that needs to be on this platform. Somebody that has to be part of this. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. Okay, we are rounding up that one minute. Keep going ahead. Keep going ahead to share to somebody. That somebody that needs to hear it again this morning. Hallelujah, God is so awesome. Hallelujah, God is so mighty. Hallelujah, God is so powerful. Our God is a glorious God. We give him praise this morning. We worship him. We worship him and the beauty of his holiness this morning. What a wonderful God we have. What a mighty God we have. What a awesome God we have. What a reliable God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. And how are we doing this morning? How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go again. How are we doing this morning? I walk. I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go one more time. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's bow our head for prayer again this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for another day. Thank you for another grace. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for our life. Thank you for waking us again this morning. Thank you for the grace that you have given to us. If not for you on our side, we don't know where we will be. Thank you for that amazing grace. Thank you for your shield over our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We can always say thank you, for we have seen that you are God. You are our strength. You are our strong tower. You are our deliverer. We are, you are our restorer. May your name be praised. May your name be worshipped. May your name be exalted. May your name be glorified again this morning. Even as we gather, we ask that your awesomeness will come with us. Your presence will go with us. You will not leave each and every one of us and you will not forsake us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we give you praise. We worship you. And all the saints of God again this morning will say, A big and thunderous, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. God bless our worship team. God also bless our, our media team for the good work that they do behind the scene. Praise the Lord again this morning, somebody. Hallelujah. Okay, this morning we are continuing in our teaching. Remember, I was teaching about the angels, and that's what we'll be dealing with this for this week. So this morning, quickly, I want you to I want you to come with me again as we allow God to lead us in this service. Remember yesterday, I quickly take one or two things, then I'll go forward from there. Angels are created to bear the message of God to the people of God. I'll say that again. Angels are created to bear the message of God to the people of God. And I said yesterday that at times, there are things that you have prayed for. God sent man, uh, God sent angels in the form of man to come and deliver your pursuit of your package to you. I have witnessed that and I know that yes, it's the reality and it's the truth. Uh -huh. God also sent this angel to protect you from the dangers of night, from the dangers of evil, hallelujah. God also sent his angels to implement judgment of God. Uh -huh. There are things that you are going through and God has to um, avenge for you. He sent his angel. God also uses his angel to worship. Angels, you know, the work of the angels is to worship God. Praise God, somebody. They worship him 24-7. And I pray that we get to the point where our hearts will be filled with the worship of God day and night. 
in the presence of God. So I'm going to be moving from there. At least I've reminded you the work of an angel. And I also said that as we give our life to Christ, it's a package, part of your package of salvation, apart from healing, apart from deliverance, apart from, uh, apart from uh, 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 wealth, um, the promises of God that he has given. He also gave you angels to serve you. They are there to serve you. They are there to protect. They are there to deliver. So let's go this hour. Let's go to the book of Acts of Apostle 12. As I turn in my Bible to Acts of Apostle 12, Acts of Apostle 12, and I'll be reading from 1 to 6. And I want you to come with me this morning because it's going to be a time of study for us again. Hallelujah. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some of who belongs to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleases the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unliving bread. And when he assisted him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squad of soldiers to guide him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people so that Peter was kept in the prison, but endless prayer for him was made to God by the church. Peter is rescued. <laughs> Hallelujah. Peter is rescued. Now, when Herod was about to bring him out of the very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentry before the door and guiding the, guiding the prison. Let's stop there and let's take the word a bit. James, the brother of John, was killed, and Herod saw that he pleases the Jews. Herod saw that he pleases the Jew. Remember the two sons of Zebedee. James happened to be one of the sons of Zebedee. Remember the sons of Zebedee that the mother asked Jesus that he wants one to be at the right, and he wants another one to be at the left. And Jesus said, it is not of me to say, who is going to be at my right hand or who is going to be at my left hand? He said, as except they, um, they take the same call, the same pain, the same trouble that I will go through, then that is of my father to determine who is going to be at my right hand, who is going to be at my left hand. Remember that scripture? So let's proceed from there again. James, um, Herod kills James, one of the sons of Zebedee. So he proceeded again, that's what the scripture says, to lay his hands on who? On Peter. Why? Listen, he said, because he felt that he pleases the people. He pleases the people. They did nothing about it. Not only that the disciple did not do anything about it, but hear this. The people, that is the people in high place of authority, the people that are rulers, the people that are part of the rulership of the nation at the time, they were so happy, they were so glad that, wow, so this king is so powerful and is able to kill and nobody did anything about it. Can I pray for somebody this morning? Hear this. Listen, if the devil touches anything in your life and sees that you are ignorant about his devices, he will proceed further. Can I say that again? When the devil touch anything in your life and he sees that it pleases you and you will do nothing about it, it will proceed further. And this is why the second uh, uh, book of Corinthians, second Corinthians 2 and verse 11 says, we must not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. At times, the devil will come in a crafty way. He will touch some things. And many times people will say, mm, it doesn't really matter. There is, there is nothing, you know, there is nothing. Some people are so ignorant. What did I say? A lot of Christians are so ignorant that when the devil is using his bait to, you know, to in a crafty way, to pull you out of where God has planted you, to pull you out of the will of God, to pull you out of the plan of God, to pull you out of the purpose of God. At times, people hear a word, they are closed. At times, their eyes are closed. They look at it like, well, it's nothing so bad. And this is why. Many times here this, this, this morning, people fall into the wall and they, are, they don't know. They follow the patterns of the wall. They do some things and they start little by little. 
they start with little, some, little by little. There are some things that the enemy uses to entice you, to pull you out of the will of God. You find out that before you know it, you begin to do like the people of the world. You begin to walk like the people of the world. And you use scripture to back up what you are doing. And that's one of the devices of the enemy. You still feel that, yes, I can still pray. Yes, I still go to church. Yes, what is it? Uh -huh. But gradually, the devil is pulling you out of the presence of God in order for him to destroy you. Can I pray for you today? By the power of the blood and the name of Jesus, the schemes and the devices of the enemy, you will not fall into it. I say you will not fall into it. I say you will not fall into it. I say you will not fall into it. Your children will not fall into it. And your household will not fall into it. Our ministry will not fall into it. Into the schemes and the devices of the enemy in the name of Jesus. This thing happened gradually. What did I say? Gradually. And that's why the scripture says, we must not be ignorant of the devil's devices. When the devil targets your job, you see, some things will go wrong. And you'll be thinking, well, it's not something too much. Then you say, okay, you will touch something again. Maybe it's your home. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your business. Maybe it's anything to do with your life. You find out that the devil first touch it. Aha, uh -huh. it first touch it. And you, at times people, ears and eyes are closed because you know they are ignorant. They won't even take notice. They won't even you know, see it as a big deal. They won't even see it as something that is too much. They just feel that, well, uh, it's just, you know, it's just a little crack. No, no, no. That little crack can become a big crack that the devil will use as an avenue to come into your life. I want to pray for you again this morning. Any crack in your life that the devil has created in order to come into your life, we seal those traps this morning. We block those doors that he has opened. Maybe it's gradually that is opening to come into your life. We shut those doors by the hands of the Most High God this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray for you this morning that whatsoever the devil intend to touch in your life and has, has started gradually in a subtle way. Today, by the power of the name of Jesus, we take his hands off it. I take his hands off it. We join force together and I speak into your life. Anything that the devil wants to talk and is touching gradually in order to destroy, in order to kill, in order to steal from you because it's a thief. I say today we take his hands off it by the power of the name of Jesus and the grace and anointing that follow and back up this commission this morning in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I pray for you by the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. Evil hand will not be able to destroy what belongs to you. Evil hand will not destroy your health, will not destroy your calling, will not destroy your marriage, will not destroy your children, will not destroy your home, will not destroy your business, will not destroy your job, will not destroy your achievement. In the name of Jesus, the evil hands of the enemy will not be able to mess up what belongs to you as a child of God. In the name of Jesus. So let's go back. The scripture says, when, when Aaron killed James, he see that he pleases people. And so he intends to do more. And that's how the devil operates. When the devil touches anything in your life and he sees that you are careless and you don't even, you know, have the notion that he's the one walking behind the scene, he wants to do more. Gradually, he will be coming in. Gradually, he will be dumping some things that is not meant to dump. You see, the devil at times behaves like an ant. Let me say this to you. The devil behaves like an ant. When an ant sees sugar, when an ant sees anything that is sweet, the ant will just, you know, smells this, touch it, and be sure, and know the spot where it is. Then it goes back and bring in other ants. So they gather together and carry it and take it to their destination. That's the way the devil behaves. The devil comes in a subtle way to touch some things. And when he sees that you are careless, he goes again and brings other demons and they gather together. This is scriptural as well. They gather together to take that thing out of your life. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Whatever you've taken out of your life, today in the name of Jesus, you will recover all. I say you will recover all. I say you will recover all in the name of Jesus. Herod, after killing James, he feels that he pleases the people according to the scripture that we read. Then what did he do? What did he do? He went to this next level. The next level now is to get Peter. Remember, Peter was the head of the church 
of Jesus Christ at that time. Remember, Jesus says, upon you, I will build my church, and the gate of Hades will not prevail over your life. So he took Peter again, and he put Peter in the prison. When he put Peter in the prison, what was his notion? His notion was also to kill Peter. But thank God, I say thank God, every error of your father's household that put you in your, that put you on your health in a prison, that put your idea in a prison, that put everything about your life into the prison, the opportunity that you have, you have, you find out that those opportunities suddenly is not working again. Idea is not working again. Today I come by the power of the blood of Jesus, whatsoever belongs to you that is in prison, is coming out of that prison as the Lord has declared that this week is the week of divine encounter. I say you are coming out of that prison, you are released from that prison, your idea is released from that prison, your beauty is released from that prison, your future is released from that prison, your opportunities are released from the prison because many times your opportunities are came and that's why you are not seeing an opportunity. At times, it can be your job, it can be cave, it can be imprisoned by the forces of darkness. There are some things that, that belongs to you that the enemy put in prison. And see this, when something is in prison, how are you going to, how are you going to use it? It's not possible. Means you cannot function the way God wants you to function. Means you have idea. An idea is not going anywhere. Can I speak to some of you? Maybe you have ideas and the ideas is not working. Hear this. You can give that same idea to other people and it works for them, but it's not working for you. How many people have you given your own ideas to? They use the same idea and you are the originator of those ideas, but it never worked for you. Those are the people I'm praying for this morning. I pray by the power of the blood of Jesus, but in the name of Jesus, every idea that you have, it will become a reality. You will not just sell it to other people and it's not working for you. Do you know at times there are people that you will just recommend that this person can help you and they go and meet those people and the help will work for them. But those same people, they will not want to help you, but they can help every other person. This kind, uh, this kind of people, what I want you to understand, it's your life has been in prison. So every other person you introduce, they will help. But when it gets to you, nobody is helping you. The same thing that you said, the your idea that you gave to other people, that work for other people, don't work for you. There are some people, you are so beautiful, and you ask yourself, question again and again, why is it my, my, that I, I'm beautiful and there's no man in a year that have approached you? You know what has happened? The beauty has been, has been caged. I'm talking to you this morning. Your beauty has been caged. Opportunity has been killed. There are things about your life that has been killed. But this morning, because this is a deliverance ministry through the power of prayer, this morning, the Lord will, will set you free from every imprisonment, every imprisonment. So Peter was thrown in the prison. Peter was thrown in the jail because he was preaching the gospel. Hear this. If someone is in the prison, how can you fulfill destiny? How can you make it? How can you use your gifting? How can you? But thank God for Peter. Hallelujah. While he was in prison, you know what happened? The spiritual make us to understand that four square soldier, four square soldier means on a daily shift, on the morning shift, in the afternoon shift, in the evening shift, in the night shift, he has 16 persons watching over the life of uh, Peter. Not only that, two of the soldiers, this is what they will do. They will change the ends of the prisoner once they are being, uh, when they are being watched by four square soldiers. They will change the ends of the prisoner to one soldier, to another soldier. People will be at the door, but that does not stop the move of God. I've got news for you this morning. Wherever they've changed your life, wherever they've changed your destiny, wherever they've changed your future, wherever they've changed your idea, wherever they've changed your beauty. This morning, the Lord is breaking that yoke over your life, is bringing you out in the name of Jesus, into the limelight, where you'll be able to fulfill your purpose in the name of Jesus. I say, where you'll be able to fulfill your purpose in the name of Jesus. This morning will be a morning that God will change your story around, that God will turn your life around, that God in his infinite mercy will do something unusual in your life that will bring glory to the name of the Lord at all. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Now let's talk. You know, it happened the first time, not even the first time, twice now. 
at, as at that time, John the Baptist had been killed. Not only that John the Baptist had been, had been killed, again, James is killed. Now it's going to be the third person, Peter. So the church said, no, no, no. We are not going to sit back and take what is coming away. And that's why I thank God for your life, that you are not sitting back and be sleeping this morning and say, hey, and I will, I, will, I will join tomorrow prayer. No, 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 no. There's no tomorrow. Today you must deal with things that you need to deal with in order for you to enter your future. Today you must deal with things that you need to deal with in order for you to enjoy your tomorrow. Today you must deal with things that you need to deal with so that you can enjoy peace and you can enter the rest of peace in your life as a child of God. So the disciples gather together and say, no, 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 no. We are not going to sit back and allow what happened to John the Baptist? John the Baptist was killed. James was killed. We are not going to sit back and not do nothing about it. And hear this. Uh, they decide to join the apostles together and they started praying that there must be a, a, there must be a sudden change. There must be a heavenly intervention in this, in this case. Hallelujah. Your, your prayer is, is going to do what you don't feel that God can use your prayer to do. Hear this. You know, at times when we pray, we don't know how God is going to do it. We don't know how God, the outcome of our prayer. But it's your, it's your own part to pray. It's God's own part to do his own part. Hallelujah. How did God enter the prison? How did the shackle that, you know, that's why they have 16 soldiers watching over the life of Peter. How did it happen? That why these 16 soldiers were there. They could not stop Peter from being released. That's the power of prayer. They could not stop. They could not stop. They didn't even know what was happening. They were there physically. And this is where I want you to know as a child of God. At times, you know, I was saying yesterday that we have a lot of invisible battle that is going on in the realm of the spirit. The soldiers, 16 soldiers were there when the angels of the Lord enter into that prison. Yes, invisibly. They did not know. They couldn't even say, this is the time or this is the hour. And this is why we must pray. This is why we must walk. This is why we must not take for granted things in our life. You see where you are right now, the angels of the Lord has entered that room. Where you are right now, the angels of the Lord is waiting for you to instruct and then go to action to do something concerning your life. Hallelujah. You know, anytime we pray, you are touching the unseen wall. Anytime we pray, we are touching the unseen wall to bring into reality something from the unseen wall into the physical. Can I say that again? Anytime we pray, we are touching the unseen wall. What did I say? We are touching the unseen wall. You may not see my picture, but at least you can hear my voice. I say anytime we are praying, we may not know, but you are touching the unseen wall. And this is why prayer is so important. Don't do without prayer. What did I say? Don't do without prayer. You may be praying and you may be saying, I've been praying now for three months. I've been praying now for six months. I've been praying now for eight months and I'm not seeing anything. Don't stop praying because the more you pray, you are touching something in unseen wall. And I've said this before. I said there are many a time that there is a lot of things that God is dealing with in your foundation. There is a lot of things that God is removing and you may not see it. That does not mean that your prayer is not working. All you need to do, you tackle with Jesus. You stay in the place of prayer. You don't allow anything to move you from the presence of God. I believe you are hearing me. I believe you are hearing me. If you can't see my picture, but you can hear my voice. So let's just go on that way. As you stand in the presence of God, in the place of prayer, and every time you are praying, there are things that are changing. There are life that God is touching through your prayer. And this is why you must not allow any distraction. Don't say, because I'm praying and I've not seen anything. I'm praying, I'm fasting, and I've not seen results. Stay there. What did I say? Stay there. Stay there. Don't allow any distraction. Stay in the presence of God. Stay in your position of prayer. Keep praying. Keep lifting up your voice. Keep asking God what you want God to change. Keep asking God. Keep asking God. When you get to a time, remember I have, I have done a teaching. You stop praying. All you do is to thank God because you know your answer is coming. So what happened? The church, the early church, they gathered together. They gathered together 
and they began to touch the unseen world through their prayer. They began to touch everything that they need to touch in the realm of the spirit as they are praying. Let me say this. Anytime we are praying, we are touching the unseen world. There are things that you are touching that you yourself, you don't know that you are touching. How I wish that God will give you an understanding of the power of prayer. There is nothing that we want to stop you from prayer. There is nothing that will deny you of your time of prayer with God. There is nothing. You will want to be in the presence of God. And all you want to do in the presence of God is to keep praying. Is to keep praying. As the people are praying, and I want you to know this as well. As we gather together in the place of prayer, you put your angels to work. One of the ways to put your angels to work is in the place of prayer. As you begin to pray, as you begin to pray, remember I said that our angels, they go ahead and they execute judgment on our behalf. Our angels, they go ahead, not only that they execute judgment, they also act on your behalf in the place where you cannot reach, in the place where you cannot do nothing, in the place where you does not even know what is happening around you. Your angels are there to defend you physically. They breach a wall between you and the enemy. They bring you out of calamity. They bring you out of trouble. You may be standing there. You may not see them physically, but they are at work. You may not see them physically, but they are moving. You may not see them physically, but they are fighting your battle. You may not see them physically, but they have opened the door for you to come out of the imprisonment that the enemy has imprisoned you. And that was exactly what happened in the position of Peter. Peter, the people were praying. At that time, Peter could not pray for himself. You know, at times when you're in problem, you cannot pray for yourself because your heart will be so overwhelmed. There will be a lot at that time that we want to weigh you down. But hear this, as they were praying, God was able to answer their prayer. I said God was able to answer their prayer. God assigned at the time an angel to go into the prison. That's why Peter was under watch, under surveillance. 24-7, but God sent his angel. The angel entered the prison. What did I say? The angel entered the prison. The people that were there and were watching, they could not see what is happening. Their eyes were blinded because God was working at the time. What happened? The church did not sleep. And this is why you must not give him any rest until you are made a praise in the head. What did I say? You, you, you. I'm talking to you this morning. Don't give him rest. Don't say because I've prayed a little and I've not seen answer. Aha, I will, aha, I'm not going to pray again. I'm not going to come to church again. I'm not going to do this again. You are the one that loses out. At that time that you feel like not praying, that is the time you need to pray more. The church did not give up on Peter. They didn't give up. They continuously, they pray. They pray. Do you know something? Prayer but destiny. What did I say? Prayer bad destiny. There are good things in your life that will not happen ordinarily, but in the place of prayer, and that's why I love when you join this group, in the place of prayer, there are things that you bat. Do you know there are times that things that you have batted in the place of prayer that you yourself, you don't know, but it's settled. It is done. It is delivered. The Lord has done it. And in the place of prayer, you may not see it physically. Do you know everyone that surrounded Peter at the time, they didn't know what happened. All the angels did is to break the chain and they were standing. They were there, they were standing. My sister, my brother, we need to pray. We need to get to the point where we believe in the God that we are serving. You need to get to the point where you know that your prayer is not wasted. That is something that you need to encourage yourself in. You need to encourage yourself to say to yourself, my prayer is not wasted. My time with God is not wasted. My fasting is not wasted. My seeds are not wasted. They take the time that I key in into the things of God. It's not a wasted time. Do you know that prayer was not wasted? They battered destiny of Peter as at that time. Peter will have been killed. Peter will have been killed the same way they killed John, the same way they killed James. But hear this, the grace and the anointing of their prayer battered, battered deliverance in the life of Peter and Peter was saved. Today again, I want to give you an assurance that somebody under the sound of my voice, today will be your day of salvation. Today will be your day of deliverance. Today will be that day that God will bring you out of, out of Mary Clay. Today will be that day that God will bring you out of your prison. Today will be that day that God will remove hindrances 
obstacles from your way and God will show you the path to righteousness. Shout hallelujah somebody. Prayerlessness in that destiny from big battle. Did you see the two? Prayer back destiny and prayerlessness in that destiny from being battered. Aha. So when you fail to pray, your destiny cannot go forward. When you fail to pray, there are certain things that will not happen. You can say to me, but hear this, pastor, I have some unbelieving friends and things are working for them and they are not prayerful as the way I am pray I'm praying. Yes, you can say that again, but listen to me. Do you know where they visit? Do you know the power that they are, you know, they are worshiping? Do you know the sacrifices that they give behind the scene? You don't know. And hear this. There is nothing the devil gives to you that will not take back in double fold. Can I say that again? There is nothing the devil will give you that will not take back in double fold. But hear this. When God gives you something, it is permanent. When God gives you joy, it is permanent. When God gives you marriage, it is permanent. When God gives you anything at all in life, it is permanent. So it's quite different from anything that you receive from the hands of the devil. I say it is quite different from anything that you receive from the hands of the devil. And this is why believers, we need to wake up. What did I say? You need to wake up. I need to wake up to reality in the place of prayer. Don't allow anything to deprive you of your morning prayer. Don't allow anything to deprive you of the corporate prayer that we pray every morning. Because in it, there is deliverance. In it, there is healing. In it, there is joy. In it, there are opportunities that are made available for you as a child of God. In it, do you know God inspires you and encourages you and shows you the path of righteousness. These believers, they gathered together and they began to pray. And this is why church must be awake today. There must be awakening among believers where we must get up and pray for our pastors, where we must get up and pray for one another, where we are not just in a relaxed mode and we begin to say, what's going to be is going to be. No, what's going to be is going to be because somebody behind the scene refused to say it's not going to, it's, it's not going to be hold back in the realm of the spirit. Somebody in the, in, in the physical is able to cry out. You see, the disciple will have said, what's going to be is going to be ah, the serving God. Yes, Jesus has said, upon this mountain, upon this church, Upon this rock, I will build my church. They will have said that and say, hey, that same Jesus will come and deliver. We come and deliver Peter. So we need not to do anything in this matter. No, 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 no. They got that together and they began to pray. They cried out to God and said, no, this will not happen again. They said, no, the devil, there's nothing for you to kill here. The devil, you cannot kill Peter. You cannot kill Peter. The promises of God concerning the life of Peter must come to pass. Do you know as a child of God, as a believer, that's how you need to stand in the gap for your children, for your marriage, for your health, for anything that belongs to you. You see, the promises of God, the devil will not just want it to fall on you like a sherry. No, no, no. It will not just want it to come to pass, but you must stay in the place of prayer where you begin to pray some things and you begin to pray and you begin to pray. And as you are praying, there is a turning point. Can I pray for you this morning? That this morning becomes your turning point. As the angels of the Lord go ahead of you. As the angels of the Lord this morning avenge for you. As the angels of the Lord open doors of opportunity. As the angels of the Lord lift your head above a position. As the angels of the Lord in the name that is above every other name. Cause the doors that have been shut of opportunity, of idea, the doors of your beauty, the doors of your home that you need to buy has been shut this morning. I pray for you. Those doors are opening up. They are opening up. They are opening up in the realm of the spirit because we are going to put our angels to work this morning. And the prison that you are in, that they will bring you out of that prison in the name of Jesus. They will showcase you that you will be who God wants you to be. Can I hear a sounding amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Psalm 94 as we go and read that Psalm now. Psalm 94. Psalm 94. You still have the opportunity to text your friends, your family, your neighbors to join us, to join us again this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to share. I want you to share as we are going to the book of Psalm 94. And I read. Ah, hallelujah. The Lord will not forsake his people. 
Oh Lord God of vengeance, oh God of vengeance, shine forth, rise up, oh church of the head, pray, repay to the proud what they deserve. Oh Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exalt? They pour out their arrogance words, all the evil do our boast. They cross your people, oh Lord, and afflict your heritage, heritage. They kill the widows and the sojourner and mother the fatherless. And they say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob does not perceive. Understand, O dullest of the people, fools, fools, when will you be wise? He who plant the ears does not hear. He who form the eyes does not see. He who discipline the nation does not, does not be both. He who teaches man knowledge. The Lord knows the thought of man that they, that they are but breath. Blessed is the man whom God discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law to give him rest from day of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. No justice will return to the righteous and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who rise up for me against the wicked? Who stand up for me against the evil doer? If the Lord has not been my help, my soul, will soon have lived in the land of silence when I taught my full sleep, your steadfast love, O Lord. Help me up when the cares of my heart are many, your consolation share my soul. Can wicked rulers be aligned with you? Those who frame injustice by status, they bound together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock of my refuge. He will bring back on them all iniquity and wipe them out from their wickedness. The Lord our God will wipe them out. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I want you to just lift up your voice this morning and begin to thank God for avenging for you. I want you to thank God for avenging for you. I want you to thank God for avenging for you. I want you to thank God for avenging for you. I want you to go ahead, begin to thank God for avenging for you. 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 Go ahead, begin to thank God, 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 begin to thank God. I want you to go ahead this morning, begin to thank God. Let's give him praise, let's give him worship. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Let's worship him this morning. Let's worship him this morning for fighting your battle, for delivering you. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God for fighting for your children, for fighting for your household, for fighting for you. I want you to go ahead. Begin to thank him. 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 Let your heart, oh God, be filled with thanks this morning. Thank him for benching for you, for avenging for you. You lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Thank you, Father. I want you to decree and declare this morning and begin to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my life will not be in prison. My life will not be in prison. My life will not be in prison. You have the big, we begin to say, anyhow, my life is in prison. Say this morning that the power and the grace of the Almighty God say, I'm out of that prison. Whatever is the imprisonment, say, I'm out of that prison. I want you to begin to press on. I want you 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 to press on. Say the same iron that brought Peter out of the prison. Say this morning. It's bringing me out. It's bringing me out. It's bringing me out. It's bringing me out. Any imprisonment in my father's side, in my mother's side, say today. I am out of that imprisonment. My children are out of that imprisonment. My household are out of that imprisonment. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. Say the same end that brought Peter out. It's bringing me out this morning. 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 I want you to pray for your children. I want you to begin to say the same end that brought Peter out of imprisonment. Say that same end this morning. It's bringing me out. It's bringing me out. It's bringing me out. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to apply the angelic assistance into your situation. Say, Father, you have said that this week is a week of divine intervention. I ask for angelic assistance to bring me out from any prison, to bring me out, to bring me out, to bring me out. 
to bring me out from any prison, maybe as a result of the name that I bear, Lord, I ask for angelic, uh -huh, for angelic end to bring me out. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead this morning again. I want you to cry out to God. Ask for angels uh, to bring you out. Say, I ask this morning for my angel, for my angel, for my angel to bring me out, to bring me out. I want you to persist uh, in pray that prayer. I want you to persist uh, the end of the living God to the angels of God to bring you out, to bring you out and join in my faith with you wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice this morning that the end of the living God will bring you out of that imprisonment, will bring you out physically, will bring you out spiritually, will bring you out mentally, will bring you out emotionally. I pray for you through this prayer that this morning you come out of every imprisonment. You are coming out. You are coming out. You are coming out of every imprisonment. Your children are coming out. Your husband are coming out. Your household are coming out. I stand in agreement with you by the power of the blood. I come back. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to decree and declare that Father, my beauty is coming out. My opportunity is coming out. My dear is coming out. It cannot be caged. It cannot be caged. My dear is coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. I want you to press on. I want you to press on. People of God, I want you to cry out to the living God this morning. Say those ideas, they cannot die. Opportunities that have been caged in my life, say today in the name of Jesus, I'm going to enter. I'm going to see those opportunities. I cannot be deprived from it again. Say I cannot be deprived. Say my children cannot be deprived from those opportunities. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice and cry out to God. Let this week be my week of divine encounter, of divine encounter, of divine encounter, of divine encounter, of divine encounter. I want you to cry out to God. Whatever has been in prison in my life, say this morning by the power of the blood of Jesus, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. Peter was in prison. The people of God prayed and, uh, and Peter came out of prison. I want you to cry out to the living God. Say, Father, what Whatsoever in the life that has been prison, that is in prison, say this morning is coming out. And you is coming out. Your beauty is coming out. Your children is coming out. Your opportunity is coming out. Your great ideas are—they are not dead. They are coming out. They are coming out. They are coming out. I want you to pray. You may not know what has been in prison in your life, but I want you to cry out and say it's coming out. My ears are coming out. My ears are coming out. I want you to decree. Your voice is coming out. Your voice cannot be a local voice. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Your star is coming out. Your glory is shining. I want you to begin to declare. You cannot be in prison. I cannot be in prison. My children cannot be in prison. My prison, I command you to open my angels. Open my prison. Open my prison. Pray it that way again. Say, my angels, open my prison. Any aspect or area of my life that is in prison, say, open it up. Open it up this morning. Open up my ministry. Open up my life. Open up, open up, open up, open up, open up, open up. My life that cannot be caged, the life of my children cannot be caged, cannot be prison. I want you to pray that way. I want you to pray that way. Say, I want you to pray that way. Say, help, Lord, this morning as you send your angels uh, to deliver, as you send your angels uh, to fight my battle, as you send your angels uh, to rescue me. You rescue me today from the ends uh, of the powers uh, that are iron to me. Oh, Lord, rescue me from the mount of men. Rescue me from the ends of the wicked. Rescue me. I want you to cry out to the Lord this morning. I want you to go ahead and cry out to the Lord this morning. 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 That the Lord will send his angels to bring you out. To bring you out. To bring you out. 
to bring you out. I'm joining my faith with you. I'm joining my faith with you. Wherever you are praying for, I want us to stay in the place of prayer. I want you to concentrate. I want you to concentrate. Open your heart before God and begin to declare. Begin to anoint yourself and say this morning by the power and the order of the word of God. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. My beauty cannot be kept. My dears cannot be kept. My opportunities cannot be kept. My children cannot be kept. My womb cannot be kept. My life cannot be kept. My glory cannot be kept. My calling cannot be kept. I want you to say it again. Just begin to anoint yourself. Begin to anoint yourself. My eyes cannot be closed. It cannot be blind. My ears cannot be deaf. Oh Lord God of grace. I am no sukalipro gaga. Devotion. Any part of my life cannot be caged. I want you to cry out to God. Press on in the place of prayer. You have one minute to cry more. Say, Lord, my life cannot be caged. Cannot be caged. Cannot be caged. Say, this morning, as this week is the week of divine encounter, I come before you. Send your angels on my behalf. Send your angels on my behalf. I want you to cry out. Say, wherever my blessing is locked and I don't have access to send your angels this morning send your angels this morning to bring those blessings wherever the blessing is locked up your angels are the same way they enter the prison that's why they have 16 squad in the prison but they were able to bring Peter out say father rooms that I cannot enter send your angels this morning to bring out my blessing to bring out my helper to bring out your husband to bring out uh, your wife, uh, to bring out uh, your children. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. Ringana no sigali braga. Regegede bo sugala bagada. Regando kaluske li braga. Enagada bo sha. Le brogagada. I join my faith with you this morning by the power. Open your water. Anoint yourself as I'm speaking over your life by the power of the blood of Jesus. Rooms that you cannot enter, that you have locked your door, that you have locked your door, that you have locked your blessing, that you have locked your husband, that you have locked your womb, that you have locked your breakthrough, that you have locked your reign, that you have locked the opportunity and helper of destiny, the blockage against you. I stand with you this morning. I answer for angelic sister. I answer for angelic sister. I answer for angelic sister. Any room, any door that you have shut against you, nigga, naga, do calibroga. Gegegegedo, nanga na masuka, remagando kalibraga, regagagadosha, the door of marriage, the door of your womb, the door of opportunity, the door of elder, the door of blessing, the door of terror that they showed against you. I answer for angelic sister this morning, this morning, this morning, those doors are open, they are open, they are open, they are open, they are open. They are open, 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 they are open. Manga naga no shigala to get those doors are open for you. The doors of promotion, the doors of healing, the door of marriage, the door of deliverance, the door of restoration, the door of favor, the door, the door of opportunity, the doors of ideas, they are open wide, they are open wide, they are open wide. They are open wide. They are open wide. Walk through it. 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 As the angels of the Lord are holding your hands and they are taking you through. 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 The angels of the living God. This morning. They are taking you through. They are taking you through from today. In the Nakoto Libro Gagada, Ringenemokoto Libraga, they are taking you through those doors by the power of the blood of Jesus. Your chains are destroyed. I don't know how many scores of soldiers that they used to watch over your life, but today, right in their face, right in their face, you are coming out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your paper. In the name of Jesus, receive favor. Receive helper. 
or destiny from today. Receive good news. Come back and testify to the goodness of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We continue this service in the second service, which is going to start from 11 to 11 to 12, 15. Don't miss it. Please, please tell your friends, tell your family, even in the place of work, make sure you take time at that time to be your lunch hour and it shall be well with you. Before we go again, we quickly want to give an offering as God has blessed you again this morning. You want to give out of the substance that God has given to you, but watch out. You are out of it. You are out of that problem. You are out of that situation. It's time for you to testify because the same angel that goes right into the prison to remove Peter, even in the midst of 16 squad of soldiers, he was removed. That same hand is removing you from where they have closed and covered your glory for a long time. So you are coming back to testify about the goodness of God. Let's quickly this morning give our offering. Please, please, I, I encourage you to join me again by 11 this morning. It shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will experience God in this season the way you have not experienced God before. The Lord will lift you up far above situation and oppression in your life in the name of Jesus. From today, you become a living testimony of what our God can do. The same way the church prayed and they received great answer. The, the, from today, you will receive great answer in every area of your life, in the name of Jesus. Until I come your way again, I want you to know that Jesus loves you, and I also love you. Keep enjoying grace, and keep doing great things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a nice day. See you 11 a.m. God bless you.